Okay, so I'm going to have a look at the easiest way to create plants in Vectorworks. Um, I've managed to set my mouse pointer to be absolutely massive, so hopefully this will be clear. Uh, I suggest you maybe play this on an iPad or a phone or something next to your computer and then you can pause it um, and stop and do the step and go back again, but probably worth watching it a couple of times. Um, there are a couple of ways of creating plants. This is the most simple one. It's going to create circular plants, basically just a straight up circle. You'll be able to add colour and stuff um, but each plant will be represented as a circle so I'm going to start by selecting the circle tool I'm going to draw a circle on this page any size doesn't really matter I then go to the landmark menu and create new plant so this has turned that circle into a plant uh, the first thing to do is the plant symbol name I'm going to call it salvia caradonna ca sure whether it's got two R's or not. No, I don't think it has. Um, right, so the mass outline, what this will do is create a cloud of plants versus lots of little circles next to each other. So I'm going to make sure that's ticked. I'm then going to work through these options on the left hand side. So first of all, the insertion options, the spread, so this will probably be 450. The height doesn't matter unless you're looking at your plant in 3D. If you really want to put it in, you can. Um, Probably about, I don't know, 400. Um, but yeah, otherwise you can just ignore it. The spacing is the centre to centre distance of your plant. So if you just want the edges to be touching, it would be 450. To get a 50 mil overlap, you'll put in 400, which is what I'm going to do. The schedule again, so the Latin name, Salvia Claridonna. And I would strongly suggest that you put this the common name also to be Salvia Caradonna. The reason for this is that there are various things that use information from the plants, um, like setting up your tags and so on, having it in a plant schedule. What this means, if you put it as a common name as well, you won't accidentally end up selecting the common name and having you know, a strange name or an unprofessional name, basically, like Daisy or something like that. Uh, so I would always just replace the plant symbol name, the Latin name and the common name, or with the Latin name. Um, the plant tag ID, you can put something in if you want to, but it doesn't really matter unless you want to have, you know, a large database of plants and each one has a separate ID reference number. I usually ignore it. Schedule size is the pot size, so for this I'm going to put in 2 litres. The quantity type, leave that as count. The SKU, stock keeping unit or price code, that's if you're selling plants, so we can ignore that and we can ignore the price as well. Render came up when we first opened this. So yeah, mass plants is ticked. You can put a shadow on. Quite why you'd want a green shadow, I don't know, but you can do that. You can check the offset basically says how far um, from the uh, page units, document units. So that's now, yeah, document units is millimetres, so that's now 100 millimetres offset here from the plant. You can change the angle and so on. I never do this, I think it just looks much neater to keep it as a straight circle. Plant data, um, again, this is a function of Vectorworks that you can pull out the data from the Vectorworks plant database and you can also update it with your own information. Um, if you're new to Vectorworks and just want to get cracking with plant plans, I probably won't bother. Um, also, the database doesn't always have everything you want. It has quite a few plants, but for me, I found it frustrating, so I sort of disabled it. At this point, you'll press OK. You may come up with a box um, asking you about the plant database. It may have opened the plant database. If you just go back to Vectorworks by clicking on the Vectorworks down here, or here if you're on a PC, um, there should be a box that will come up. And one of the options is options. And there will be a tick box at the bottom. And it will say something like, always look for plant data in database or something. Deselect that and press OK. So you now have a plant. So if I now go to Object Info, you'll see that this is a plant. You'll see that it is the Salvia caradonna um, and a bit more information about it here. So the spread, the height, the spacing, you'll be able to manually change here, um, but not anything else. 
Okay, I'm going to do another plant just to go through that again. Again, I'm going to draw a circle. I mean, you could draw squares or any shape you wanted to at this point, um, but the circle is what we're going to use today. So I've drawn a circle. Again, size doesn't matter. Go to Landmark, Create New Plant. Um, so today I'm going to call it Alcamilla Mollis. So I'm selecting that and copying uh, Command C. Go to insertion options. I reckon that's maybe 500. I'll ignore the height. The spacing can be 450. I'll go to schedule. So the Latin name, Alcamilla Mollis. Common name again, Alcamilla Mollis. That will be in a two litre pot. Ignore everything else. Mass plants is on, no shadow, and I'm ignoring plant data. So I press OK. And you'll now see it has created another plant and it has automatically got that one selected. So on the next video, I will show you how to place, well, select and place these plants.